So today I'm going to endeavor to tear apart the interior in the rear of my C706 Corvette and install a Vetworks Shark Bar. I'll also be doing another video where I pull out the seats to install the brake house lap clips. But basically the process here and the reason why I'm starting with the Shark Bar is I'm going to need to get down into this left or right passenger corner to disconnect the battery after I move the seats backwards and forwards for the lap clips. And this rug carpet is almost impossible to get out without uh, removing that trim panel. And since these whole panels all up the sides have to come off in order to drill a hole there, yeah, I'm gonna drill a hole and there, and then the shark bar will go across here. So the first step is to take uh, trim tools. I have a set that I picked up at Harbor Freight for like $3.99. Um, and the first step here is going to be to wiggle it around in here to remove these. Uh, I believe the clips are angled in at the bottom and at the top. So I'm going to start by coming in from underneath here and prying like that. Unfortunately, I can't do that with one hand, so I'll have to let you know how it goes. So I actually found this to be fairly easy, and I am not an interior guy. As soon as I got this in here, this bottom clip popped. The front one comes right out, as you can see, and then these back ones, you can see how they're angled. It's sort of at like that, 45 degrees. If I back up, sort of like that. So you kind of need to pull like this to get this piece out. So again, you can see the back of this. I've got it off. Um, it's really not that bad. They kind of, it sits like this. So you, by working your tool in from the bottom, I got it up like this. This one here released really easily. That front one up here was a real pain. And you just basically work it until it finally goes. Uh, the piece comes off. And then the next step in the instructions is to move on to these. And I think these are supposed to be really simple. There's like a little clip on them um, that I'm just gonna, maybe I can do it here on the camera. I'll get one that has the right angle. But basically this little thing that sticks down, um, I'm gonna just put a little hook under there, pop it up, and then there is a screw inside of here. So this side and that side both need to come off. I figured for posterity, I should just prove that I know how to do this. That goes under there, that's it. Off it comes, and then a Torx bit will go in here and over on that side to finish the removal of these clips. So it's a Torx 40 on a, uh, for me, 3 8 inch drive, and in it goes. Like, very minimal effort to get it started. Um, the passenger side was even less. Don't forget it's a GM product, so don't expect everything to be the same all around, but that's it, it comes off. And you can see when you're gonna install it again, it's indexed, there's this little piece here that goes in that little hole. So if you try to put it in sideways, um, you're an idiot. So with the cover panel removed and that uh, clip point removed, it tells me that I now need to yank off this entire panel here. And it says it's easiest to start at the rear and work your way forward. So I'm trying to do this with one hand for the first time ever. And it's not going too well. So I probably will set the phone down. I'll try over here. The beauty of these videos is it's real time, no prep. So there's a clip here. There's a clip up here. Whew, that's in there good. Ah, there we go, a couple of clips, a couple more clips, and we have liberated the panel. 
mostly. So the panel's still attached up in the front, and uh, I'm going to have to go up there and see what to do. But moving the camera over here, you can see all the clips that are on the back. Oh, look, and it just keeps going. That's nice. So way up there, and there's the seatbelt tensioner, which I know is right around the region where I need to be doing stuff. So progress. That looks like a shitty mess I just made. Amazing how much just a piece of plastic makes a car look nice. Anyhow, to get those front clips off, there was one little clip on the end there and there. I found it easier to lean the seats forward. Um, and I'm going to be messing around with the seats here in a minute. Anyhow, for those Bray Krause lap clips. But right in this region here, right in there, is where the shark bar is ultimately going to attach. So the shark bar instructions tell you to cut this piece of trim right here while it's attached to the car. They have like a, a circular um, cut blade. You could use a Dremel. They show an air tool. But the point is, this thing is attached by a very interesting style clip. Um, and the way you actually can detach it is the plastic's very flexible. You can see that. You actually pull it back and out. So you actually will sort of rotate it like, I don't know if you can see my hand, rotate it like that, and this yellow plastic piece disconnects. So I have an aversion to chopping too much plastic out of the car. Now I'm sure, because right here is what we're gonna take off, and that's where the mounting harness bracket goes, or mounting bracket goes for the harness bar. So I'm sure some of this is going to be in the way, but this spot right here is crucial because that's where the clip that lives on this trim piece goes. Not this top one, but this bottom one down here. And right in here is where we're going to cut the hole for the shark bar. So what I'm going to do is not follow the instructions exactly. I am going to take some rags as they suggest and pack them down in here so that when somebody that is as uncoordinated as myself drops the nut off, it will just fall onto the rag and it won't become a two-day project tearing apart the car to get the, the nut back. Um, but I'm gonna take that off and I'm going to finagle the uh, harness bar mount point in there. And then I'm gonna kinda evaluate what else needs to be cut. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to place the, the template, and I'll show this in detail, that they give you on here and drill the hole with my hole saw, make the cut in this so you can get it over the harness bar, and then hold this up in place and see how much of this actually needs to be relieved. My guess is it's probably not going to be a lot, and then if I can stretch this back over and clip it back on, that's a win in my book because it's one less thing to rattle, and these cars get a little rattly sometimes. Before we talk about the shark bar harness mount, let's talk a little bit about this yellow plastic clip. So there's a tab on this side. As you can see, there's a little hook, so you need to pull that out. What I did to release both sides is used a screwdriver in the hole here. So kind of push on the back side of it that way. Well, I'm using my free hand to pull up on that tab to relieve it. And the whole thing sort of, you can slide it. You can see here, this gives you a little bit of an idea. See how much play there is in this back and forth? This clip here, you basically have to slide it off like that. Uh, it goes, it's hard, but boy, once you get it off, it's off and easy. And it should be pretty easy to put back on too. Just push it, you're going to push the yellow thing towards the front of the car, and then you're going to sort of turn this and pull it back onto it like that. So to prove I'm actually doing what I said I'm doing, you can see a rag jammed up in there, you can see an 18 millimeter socket on there, and you can see an extension that has a magnet on it. And I'm not trying to do this with one hand upside down backwards in the car, but look, it's moving. You have to take my word for it that this is how I'm going to get it off. All right, I got the nut off. I removed, that sounds wrong. 
I removed the uh, rags that were in there and I pushed the shark bar um, bracket in. And you can see right up in there, that stud right there is through the bracket and there are the bolts that are gonna hold the shark bar. Now the orientation of the shark bar, when we come back here, that bracket you can see is completely behind this. Well, the shark bar has a bracket welded to the bar itself that comes up here. So the hole is gonna be roughly here in the trim piece that covers the whole inside quarter here. So I think I'm pretty good. I might have to do a little relief here. And if I do, I'm just gonna bring a Dremel into the car and do that. Um, getting the bolt, getting the nut back on that stud is gonna be, I think, a bit of a challenge. But again, I don't think that should be too bad. And I'm gonna find a way to jam some rags and stuff down in there. I just have a terrible history of dropping things like that and having them roll to the center of the earth inside of cars. So I'm extra cautious with that. But that's how it goes in. You can see there's a metal piece that actually provides support that engages the frame back here. And then these two hex heads are what are gonna be used to attach the bar to the bracket. Now this trim piece is problematic. I can see why they have you cut it and chisel out a whole bunch of crap here. Um, I'm going to endeavor to get it to release further on the B-pillar so that I can actually work in here. Now I may have to take this piece off because this is under it, um, but that's kind of a small price to pay to keep everything intact and be able to get this to re-engage here when the shark bar is installed because I think that will, um, will keep the car a little bit more solid internally. I mean, there's no structure to that, but it'll just keep things from rattling. So I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit, and when I get a good solution, I'll record that. So with the nut off the stud, on the passenger side, we're ready to proceed. The instructions talk about some bundles of wires you gotta move out of the way. There's nothing to them. I mean, you literally just squeeze them out of the way. So we'll pull those out of the way, and we'll get that bracket up in there and get that bolt attached, or that stud attached with a nut. I tried to film it. It's definitely a two-hand job. These wires are easy to move. They just fight for space. So that's how it should look when it goes in. Uh, now you put your nut on and tighten it down. So I've attached both sides and I'm now starting to see when they say you may have to trim this piece what they mean, although the instructions are really poor for this. Um, you can see the two holes for the shark bar where they need to align. This piece clearly needs some cutting. Now they say just cut this thing off. Well, that ain't gonna do it for you. Um, even though there's an angle there, I can see clearly that's gonna hit right there. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a Dremel and I'm going to get a marker. And I'm gonna mark this surface roughly where I think I'm gonna need to get rid of some material to be able to get this shark bar down in there. Uh, and then I'll obviously have to repeat the same thing on that side. The Probably the worst part of this here is how close that shark bar is when it flops over to puncturing those speakers. So I held the shark bar up. I think that's about what I need to cut out. Maybe, maybe the instructions are right. I believe the instructions have you cut this thing right here. But again, I kind of don't want to lose this structure here because this is a heck of a clip to hold this thing in place, and man, I hate rattles. So I'm gonna try my own thing, see if that works. If it does, easy peasy, good to go. If it doesn't, I'll just cut the thing. Easily enough space in there to get those bolts lined up with those holes, both top, and it's very hard to see down in there, but bottom, and lots of clearance here to be able to get that reattached. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, it's a little bit of futzy work, like put it in, make a couple cuts, remove it. But overall, I think that profile looks pretty good. Um, we've retained that clip and we've retained this clip, which I think are both positive things. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with this. And uh, I'm now going to repeat it over here. Same, same process here, cutting this down. Um, the only thing you gotta be careful of on this side is just as you're doing it, 
there is that wire bundle there. So I'll just be extra careful, but same process over here. All right, so I'm done carving out both sides. The shark bar is pretty close to where it needs to be. You can see it lines up. I can move this piece as needed to get it out of the way. So now you're gonna take your, your um, hex drives and the instructions recommend you start with the bottom hole. And I can see why, because you kinda, once you put that top one in up here, you're gonna really obstruct view of trying to get it into that bottom one. So I'm gonna try to jam some rags up in there if I can, just because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose pieces like I do. And uh, this unfortunately is just one of those things, there is no way, I've tried three or four different ways to position this camera, um, which is my phone, and there is no way in hell I can get this so that you can see me do it, but it's really not too hard. This was sort of the best angle I had here. You can see the two holes, and I'm gonna come up in from underneath. Boy, it'd be great if for cinematic purposes it would catch, but I just can't do it with one hand. But that's all there is to it. You'll get it in there. Um, you know you've got it because these holes are, um, the threads start deep in the bracket. So you just kind of move, you can kind of see here, Let's see if I can show you without losing that. That's up in there. Kind of move the shark bar. Boy, I'm more than dangerous. Move the shark bar around. See how I'm moving it back and forth there? Um, you'll move it up and down until you actually get it into the hole. It's pretty easy to do with two hands. One hand, this is impossible. So just take my word for it. Figured once I got this far, I ought to start up the video again. Um, you can see I've got the top one in now, the bottom one in, and I'm just using a, a straight shaft to get that kind of snugged up. Now, what I have noticed, and I think it's just for geometry purposes to fit it in the car, you can see there's a few threads exposed right there. And the front of this is, now I'm kind of getting tight. And then over here, same sort of thing, right? It's not, you can see that's out uh, and not flush. So the reality is the shark bar, these bolts and that bracket are crucial to taking the stress, but they're actually not, the bar is not flush to the bracket on both sides. So I'm kind of playing around with, or I'm gonna play around with, kind of loosening each one of these a little bit, loosening the other side, and trying to move the bar in and out to get that, the amount of threads between the bar and the bracket pretty much the same on both sides. Once you've done that, the instructions are clear. You take a torque wrench, set it to 20 pound foot or foot pound, and then just torque those down. Then these plastic pieces I'll push back in. And the last part really is taking uh, those trim pieces that are just laying there in the back, sticking the templates on them, drilling the holes, making the cut, and we are done. All right, there we go. We have both sides torqued down to 20 foot pounds, which took me forever because I started to torque this side and I guess I hadn't realized that one of those was not installed correctly. So I got one side torqued, came over here, bolt fell out, untorqued other side, came back over here, pushed it in. So now this flap, if you follow the instructions, this will have been cut off. In retrospect, I should have cut the damn thing off, but now you just turn it on its side and jam it in there if you kept it, and then we'll reattach it to that plastic clip back here. There we are, reinstalled. And I take back what I said. I'm really actually glad I left this on here because that pulls this piece in nice and flush so that when this clip here gets engaged, which is the bottom clip here on this piece. So when that clip goes in that hole, this is held nice and flush um, without this bridge here to this tab, this piece very easily wanders forward. Um, so I really like the notion of what I decided to do. It was definitely more screwing around to cut this groove here. Um, 
However, I think I realized an easier way to do it. I think if I had applied the template to this piece back here, this template that we'll be doing in the next step, I probably could have held this up here and then just traced where I needed to cut. And that's how I think I would do it if I do this again ever, which will probably never happen. But I think that would make this the best of both worlds. You'd have your template cut on here, know exactly where that hole needs to be, and then you'd be able to cut this to match that that contour of the hole and still retain the use of this clip back here, which again, I'm very happy I did. It, it's just one less thing to rattle in the car. All right, I'm finally out of the car and standing up like a person again. We've got our driver's side and our passenger side um, rear trim pieces, and there are templates that come with the kit. So this template piece here is gonna get attached to this right here. Um, they're stickers, so I'm gonna pause the camera and if you can't peel a sticker and stick it yourself, something's wrong with you. But you can see this contour of this sticker matches this contour right here. They go right like that. So that's gonna tell us where the hole goes, which is sort of in this weird, bendy, twisty area, which is why in the C7 shark bar, they do not include grommets to finish. In the C6, it goes in like here, and there's a nice rubber grommet that goes around so it looks almost factory. This is sort of a weird shape, so nobody has made a grommet to fit it yet. Great business opportunity for the 10 people that have installed these. So there's the template applied on the passenger side. I did the driver's side and realized I probably should do the video. <clears throat> so what I do when I have paper templates is I'm going to put the drill where it needs to go. In no way am I doing this on film. But what I'm gonna do is I'll start it right there and then I'll stop it and I'll restart filming. So you can see where I started. Drill bit right in the center of those crosshairs. Now there's no, if I leave the template on here, it's gonna wrap around the drill bit and be a mess. So now I take it off and I'll actually typically save the sheets of paper and I'm obviously going to save some pieces and parts of these different installs so this can go with everything that's left over and in the future if I ever need to do this again uh, or if for some reason I was to remove the shark bar and I want to sell it I have the templates available so I don't like to throw them away and I don't like to wreck them so now all I do is I'm going to take the drill to that little point that's there and the point of the drill will go in there and I'll just cut out the hole. Here we go. Hole's cut out, piece of plastic's in the drill. That's it. Um, most of this stuff here is just wipes off. Some of this I clean up myself so it looks good. And then the last piece of this, as you can see here on the template, there is this cut panel slide over bar. So there's lots of ways you can do this. I figure a set of tin snips coming in at an angle is probably the easiest way to do it. Just one snip. Our piece of trim. So you can see that little cut we made. Why you make that cut is to get around the bar. That clip right there is going to go in that hole. This clip right here is going to go in this hole. And you're basically then going to reinstall this panel. So I'm going to see if I can use my shark bar. Nope. Use my shark bar to hold the camera. Perhaps show the installation. Look at that. Wow. These vet works boys know what they're talking about. So that's it. That's the installation for that. Um, now it's a matter of all the fun that people have with interior stuff, lining up those clips and listening for the there it is. I beat on it. I pushed on it. It's all fully reinstalled. Vacuum that cleaned up all of the debris from grinding stuff off. So now we've got this clip with the um, Torx that held that on there and the plastic cover and then the guy that lived in there. And this side is done. So there it is. Installed. Corvette Works Shark Bar.
overall, not too bad. It's pretty easy to hide. So these pieces here, push them, align them. You can hide that for the most part. But not too bad. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty stock, I think. Uh, and that was one of the concerns that I had is I didn't want my ride, even though she gets tracked, to look like crap. So I'm pretty happy with that. Brake Rouse is another good option for a harness bar. The thing is, the Brake Rouse mounts way up here. So it's like a real high mount up here, much closer to your, um, your seatbelt. And the bolts stick out, and it just, I don't know. The other nice thing about the uh, shark bar is because it's nice and low to the contour of this hump is when you're sitting in the car and you want to just set something back there, um, you're, you're still able to do that. I, I think the BK version is just, it looks beefier. I don't think you get much more out of it unless you're ultimately going to switch to race seats, which I'm not, in which case that's sort of a buy once, cry once scenario. But overall, pretty happy with it. Uh, I hope these instructions help other folks out there. There were no good videos on doing this particular uh, Corvette Works C7 Shark Bar.